Welcome to BE170A2. Um, this is the revised introduction to the course. Um, due to trying to deal with AI, I've changed the writing assignments to discussion posts. And um, due to the university um, offering to help me reorganize the course a bit, um, I've also made some other changes. So. This is the updated syllabus for my course, uh, Formation of a Planetary Biosystem, which is BE170A2. It's a general education course at the University of Arizona. So this is your typical um, natural science course where um, we hope to integrate um, skills that you'll need for other um, disciplines, such as using peer-reviewed sources, presenting technical information, uh, presenting information in videos, and distinguishing between laws, theories, hypotheses, and unknowns. And uh, specifically in this course, it's a very broad range. Uh, we start with five weeks on astronomy or cosmology, and we spend about five weeks on the Earth. And then we spent about five weeks on um, animals, up to humans. Of course, I don't think humans are animals. There were animals in a way, but I think humans are beyond animals. So I don't want you to think, I think humans are animals. And also, um, we'll look at some of the strengths and weaknesses in the models of natural history. You know, um, scientists have made an awfully lot of progress in the last century, um, understanding how we got here. But there's still some uh, gaps in understanding, such as the origin of the universe, certain things about the origin of the solar system, certain things about the origin of humanity. So these are the activities. It, it sounds like a lot, but it's really not that bad. Um, seven to eight quizzes with five to seven questions each. These are multiple choice quizzes, and you have unlimited attempts. Uh, seven discussion prompts. And so what I do is I write down the discussion prompts and you can either post directly to those prompts or you can respond to other people's posts. But you need to have eight total posts, whether they are original posts or responses to posts. And that's every week. But every four weeks, you're going to make a video, something that you are interested in from that uh, four-week interval. And... Then the next week, you're going to comment on four other people's videos. And then you're going to work on a signature writing assignment uh, during the course, and you'll post your first draft during the 12th week, which I will review. And the main purpose of uh, reviewing it is to give you feedback. Of course, I'll enjoy reading it, I'm sure. But my main purpose is to give you feedback. And then... Um, the final draft will be due at the end of the course, 15th week. So the chapter modules look like this. Uh, the university has kindly assisted me with uh, organizing these. Chapter, the overview is just like the broad overview of what's going on that week. That doesn't have a links to assignments and so on, at least usually doesn't. And then Right below that is the um, link to the course readings. So there's uh, course readings at a website that I'll show you along with videos and so on. And then below that is all the links to the quizzes and all and below that is all the links to the discussion prompts. So each week there's a chapter. Uh, so this is chapter two. And so the assignments would be the discussion posts, the quizzes, and the reading. And then um, chapter three, uh, the following week, we'll have this similar format. Here's where all the um, readings are. Um, also, there's links to PDF. So if you don't want to read off a website, um, all the chapters are PDFs. And there's also links to all the videos. At the website, all the videos are embedded, but on the page where there's PDFs and videos, it's just the links. 
Okay, here's an example of discussions for week two. So you just respond to these and um, then you would either, um, you know, there's seven of these. You would either respond to seven and um, maybe respond to one other person or you could do just eight responses to other people's posts, whatever you wanna do so that you have eight posts per week. And then here's the videos. Uh, we're using Feedback Fruits for the first time this year. Uh, we have used VoiceThread in the past, um, but Feedback Fruits is the new tool that's going to be used in D2L. It's, it's completely embedded, so um, it's supposed to be better. But you're gonna make a video every four weeks and post it. You can make the video any way you want, and then uh, you can post it, or I think you can use PowerPoint slides inside Feedback Fruits and make a video there. And then you'll comment on other people's videos on the fourth to eight weeks. And like I said before, I think, uh, write down your comments while you're watching the videos and then read them. Uh, it's a lot better than just trying to remember what to say about uh, somebody else's video. With respect to the videos, um, there needs to be at least six slides and a minimum of four minutes. I like to write down what I'm gonna say. And so that's much smoother. But maybe you like being more extemporaneous, that's fine. But I do expect the presentation to be organized. Um, I like when you only use a few bullets per slide, so there's not a lot of writing, and then you write down what you're gonna say. Um, I like using PowerPoint notes, but you might want to write down what you're gonna say somewhere else, like on a different piece of paper. And here's the signature writing assignment. So the first draft due in the 12th week, like I said, 2,000 words, uh, five references, and they should be outside references, not from my website, Cosmos. Uh, you know, you can use NASA website, you can use uh, peer-reviewed references off journals, uh, whatever you'd like to do and what is most appropriate. You can use Cosmos references in addition to the five references if you want to. Uh, you're welcome to build on some of your discussion posts. So you're going to do a lot of writing in the course and discussion posts. You're welcome to build off those or have a completely different assignment. So I have five suggested focus areas. Uh, the first one is history, sort of the history of science. Um, you might be interested in a certain area like the Big Bang or the origin of invertebrates or maybe the entire um, life history on Earth or maybe, you know, the sequence from the Big Bang to our planet. But talk about the history of how the discoveries were made, how the technologies were developed to observe, like the telescopes, how the um, theorists and the observational scientists work together. And um, so really you're building a story of the history of how something was discovered. You might wanna focus on just the natural science, like describing how the earth formed, describing how the solar system formed, um, the history of life on earth. I'd like you to think about some of the gaps that are still there in understanding, such as the beginning of the universe is a gap. Um, and there's other gaps too. And, and then also think about how improved theory and observations or instruments led to an understanding of maybe some of those gaps and how the nat natural processes occurred. Another uh, focus area might be a perspective of natural scientists. Like how do natural scientists think? Um, how do they go about their work? How do they integrate theory and observation? How do they work with others? Um, how do they integrate mathematics and science? and then describe how conflicts and ideas, you know, there's always conflicts and ideas, sort of how science works. And then the peer review process where scientists submit papers to journals and then other scientists review them and criticize them and so on. But how that whole thing works. I mean, that's really how science advances through the uh, peer review process. It's a big part of it. You know, scientists coming up with something and then submitting it for peer review. 
or you might want to focus on the science like how do the telescopes work um how were they improved over time how did observations or the desire for new observations lead to new designs of telescopes like right now they're trying to discover gravity waves so they're thinking about how can i make a telescope to observe gravity waves or how can i design an experiment to observe gravity waves and then another topic might be um how the ease of detection for instance in geology there's rocks on earth it was much easier than in cosmology where they had to build a telescope to look out into space and also some new efforts to detect new data like how there's a lot of people trying to figure out how to directly detect dark matter or dark energy you know they have indirect detec detection methods but how do they directly detect it or how do they see new planetary systems or planets not new but new to us or how do they detect the changes in the fossil record in plants and animals or you might be interested in metaphysics which means not physics you know um so how does philosophy and science go together um possibly some of the processes that are unknown such as the origin of the universe again um and describe how philosophers and religious people react to data and that either supports or contradicts their viewpoints and describe the impact of data on philosophy and religion you know there's a lot of examples of that sort of thing okay here is the um, syllabus and as you can see each week there's discussions and quizzes due and then in the third and fourth weeks, we have feedback fruits, uh, videos and responses, and so on. Here's the signature writing assignment to the 12th week. So you'll turn it in there, and I'll try to get it back to you the next week. And then um, you'll respond to the, the feedback. And here's the grading. So discussion posts are 30%, quizzes are 30%. I drop like one week of each um here's the the videos that they're actually worth quite a bit uh 16 the responses are worth four percent and then the signature writing assignment is worth 18 percent so understanding that you might be sick for a week or two or a week <laughs> i drop a few but please don't use up your dropped assignment the first week and then uh, you're guaranteed these scores i normally don't have to curve this class um so this is probably the breakdown of the grades okay i just want to go over the weekly topics um so like i said i don't know if i said but we start with the big bang and the um formation of the universe over the last uh, 14 billion years talk about some of the expansion forces contraction forces and how those remained in balance for 14 billion years the period of inflation uh, the quantum fluctuations then we'll talk about uh, matter and energy and how the matter first formed in the big bang and then how the elements formed in stars how molecules formed in dark molecular clouds prior to the solar system and we'll talk about the um, stars uh, disks so there's protoplanetary disks such as the one that formed our solar system and now they can see these disks out in space with the um can't remember the name alma telescope down in chile and and also probably james webb telescope then we'll talk about the formation of the planet how our planet formed um, how life first originated or maybe not first originated but evolved um, over the first four billion years of the earth and uh, eventually formed plants then we'll talk about our climate and we'll focus on the different um, eons first was the hadean the archaean the proterozoic and the phanerozoic so the animals have only existed in the phanerozoic eon and the uh Plants first appeared in the pro end of the Proterozoic, and this is all switched around now. But we'll talk about the climates that 
um, existed at that time and actually some of the big controversies about the climate such as was there a snowball earth or a tipped axis in the Proterozoic Eon and how the oxygen started or the atmosphere started becoming aerobic in the Archaean and so on. Okay, then we'll shift on to animals and we'll first talk about invertebrates. Then we'll talk about vertebrates. So those both appeared in the beginning of the Cambrian or just before. Then we'll look at the uh, everybody's favorite, the um, dinosaurs, but uh, we'll also look at birds and crocodiles. Um, so there's different, two different major categories of reptiles. Uh, there was of the archosaurs, there was the dinosaurs, which were closer to birds, and there was the crocodiles, which are, or the um, I can't remember what they're called at the moment, phytosaurs and crocodilomorpha. But anyway, there's there was there's some that looked like birds and some that looked like crocodiles. Then we'll talk about the um, evolution of mammals. And we'll first talk about the evolution of mammals during the age of dinosaurs. So um, we got our start in the age of dinosaurs. And then there was a mass extinction event represented by this line here. And then above that is the age of mammals. So all the dinosaurs died, and then we took over. So here's the age of mammals, chapter 12, where our modern types of mammals um, evolved. Then we have humans, um, which uh, probably you could say began to evolve about 2 million years ago. And then um, about 60,000 years ago, spread around the earth. And so we'll talk about that. Then we'll look at the Neolithic age, which is when the um, agriculture began. And so uh, that was the beginning of civilizations. And so the civilizations began in the big river valleys, Mesopotamia, Nile, Yellow River, and also in, in America, uh, the Americas. There was uh, some big civilization, Inca, Maya, that started um, about approximately, actually, the uh, um, the Neolithic began in like Israel, Palestine area, and then uh, spread from there. So about 10, 000, 10 or 12,000 years ago, they started uh, farming crops. And then we'll talk about civilization. We'll focus just on the early civilizations like Egypt, Mesopotamia, uh, Rome. Uh, we won't have time to proceed to the uh, present, but you might wonder um, why would formation of a planetary biosystem have civilization? Well, as you know, um, we dramatically altered the biosystem. It's probably the biggest change. I don't know in, the, in how long, but we've, we've made a huge change in our biosystem, mostly um, causing the extinction of mass numbers of uh, different types of organisms. So uh, there's that. And then we've also... Uh, turned most of the arable land into farmland. And uh, that's most of the surface of the earth, you know, that's that's um, arable is now farms or, versus what it was before, maybe grassland or something. Uh, we've cut down many of the forests. I probably, you know, you know of all these changes. And now we're causing global warming, which is causing more extinction. So I just wanted to leave you with some positive thoughts. Hope you enjoy the course.